Hey everybody, welcome back to episode 2 of Zero to CSWP. My name is Lucas, and in this video, we're going to be going over more features, parts, and even more sketching. Two things before the video gets started. First of all, I'm going to put a practice sketch up on screen that you can either try to create for yourself, or follow along with in the video. We're going to be using this sketch to start our part. And second, if you like the video, be sure to give it a like. Subscribe for more SolidWorks related content, and with that out of the way, let's get right into the video. Let's create a new part to start making the sketch I previewed in the introduction. First, a quick note on how we change units in SOLIDWORKS. In the bottom right corner, we can select different options from inch pound second to millimeter gram second. I'm going to use inch pound second or IPS for this series, but it's always important to check during the exam what the units are and to know how to change them. Let's create a new sketch on the top plane. A good tip for creating sketches based on drawings is first to draw all the entities you need for the sketch, then add relations, and lastly, add the dimensions. If we take a look at the drawing of the sketch we need, we can see that there are three main sections. On the left, we have a rectangular section, while on the right, we have a circular arc connected by an angle line. Then in the center, we have a slot, where a slot is just two semicircles connected by lines. When we get to drawing this, we will be using a standard slot entity to model this, instead of drawing the individual lines and arcs. Let's start creating a sketch. I will use the line entity starting at the origin, using the origin as an anchor point so my sketch will be fully defined by the end of my sketch. You can choose any point of the drawing to start with, but I'm going to choose the top line that is connected to the arc. Now let's bring this first line out to the left, and before we click, we can see that a yellow box to the bottom right of my cursor appears. Remembering back to my first video, this shows us that a horizontal relation will be given to the line once it's created. Let's keep creating the shape of our drawing, noting the relations that are being created. Using the line entity, after every line is created, a new one will be started with a property that the previous and new lines will be coincident to each other, so that they are connected. Now for the angled line. Let's bring it horizontal to the origin. We can see that a white box with a relation will show up to the bottom right of the cursor. The difference here is that white denotes the relation will be used to position the entity, but it will not be sustained in the drawing, meaning there actually is no relation being added. Now that we are done with our lines, we can press escape or double click our mouse. To verify that a horizontal relation was not added between the endpoint of our last line, we can click the entity to open the property manager. We do not see any horizontal relation as well if we exit the property manager we can simply move the point off of the horizontal. Again, this reiterates that there is no horizontal relation. To view your relations for any entity, you can select it to open the property manager, or you can select the display slash delete relations button to view all of the relations in the sketch. Lastly, to add any relations, you can use the add relations button, or more simply, select the entities you want to add relations to, and then select the relations to add in the property manager. To select multiple entities, hold down Control and select them. Let's add in the arc now. I will use a three-point arc, which is good for when we are connecting two points whose ends are not going to be tangent to the arc, and when we don't know the center point of the arc. Then lastly, let's add a slot into the center of the bounded area. Where we place it does not matter, as we will define it with relations and dimensions afterwards. First, let's add the tangent relation between the arc and the angled line, again by holding down control and selecting the two entities. Next, let's add the parallel relation between the slot and the angled line. Let's add the coincentric relation between the top of the slot and the arc, and lastly, the perpendicular relation between the arc and the top line. Here we see an issue. If we look in the property manager, there is no option for perpendicular, as one cannot be created in this instance. In this case, we need to get a little bit creative. A perpendicular relation just means that at the point the arc and the line intersect, the angle is exactly 90 degrees. To achieve this, we can make the center point of the circle in line with the line we are trying to make the arc perpendicular to, because the tangent to the arc will be at 90 degrees to the line. Now we can finish defining our sketch by adding the dimensions from the drawing. We will add the dimensions for the lines by selecting them with a the smart dimension tool. Then we will give the angle dimension by selecting the two lines forming the angle. Lastly, let's assign the length and radius dimension to the slot. Now our sketch is defined, which means we can begin turning it into a part. Before we create our part, let's talk a bit about features, bosses, and bases. 
Features are functionalities inside SolidWorks that edit parts in relation to its 3D volume. For example, a fillet will round a corner, either adding or removing part volume, depending on if the angle between faces is more or less than 180 degrees. The boss base features are special because they can be used to create the first volume in a part, excluding special features such as in weldment or sheet metal design. The five boss base features are extruded, revolved, swept, lofted, and boundary, but it should be noted lofted and boundary are almost never seen on the CSWP exam, and thus we will not be covering them. The difference between a boss and a base is the base is the first feature created, and bosses are those thereafter. For every boss base feature, there is a cut feature, for example, the extruded cut that takes away volume instead of adding it. When you are creating a new part, always think of the boss base features, as you will need one of them to start creating your part. Let's extrude the sketch by using the extruded boss base button. A quick thing to note is that extrusions have multiple end types. The one selected, blind, simply means it will go up a certain dimension that we select. We can select other end types to change where the extrusion ends, usually which is in relation to other part geometry. As well, we can select the arrow to change the direction it moves. We will extrude it 5 inches upwards. Remember, to rotate your view, press and hold the center mouse button and move your mouse. Alternatively, if you don't have a mouse, you can right click the interface and select rotate view. However, I would recommend buying a mouse if you plan on using SolidWorks further. Now, we are going to add some more features with no real design intent in mind. This is different from how you will be designing on the exam. I will be talking more about the exam at the end of the video, and in the next video there will be a practice part for the CSWP. But for now, let's just get back into experimenting and learning with the features you should know. Let's take a look at the shell feature. This feature takes the part you have and hollows at the part, leaving a certain wall thickness according to the dimension you assign in the property manager. You can select faces to remove from the shell feature, which means that they will be fully removed once the shell is finished. We will select a thickness of 0.4 inches for the wall thickness, and select the top face to be excluded from the shell feature. We can see that the interior slot kept thick walls of 0.4 inches as it had its faces exposed. Let's use a revolved cut to cut out a segment of the extruded arc. Every revolve feature requires a sketch and a line which is used to revolve the sketch about. Let's start a sketch on this face. I will quickly add three lines to make a triangle and dimension it to be centered along the thickness of our arc. I will add an angle dimension and utilize the equal relationship on the triangle as I want the triangle to be isosceles. This fully defines our sketch and we can now begin making the revolved cut feature. To begin our feature, I'll select the revolved cut button to begin. I want to have a revolved cut around the circular section of our feature with the profile of our sketch. So first, I will select the sketch we created. Now, I need a line to have this sketch revolve around. Under this menu, I can control all the visibility for different types in SolidWorks. I can select temporary axes to view all axes made by any cylindrical section of my part. I can see the axes I want centered around the large cylindrical area, and I can select it. For the revolve feature, we have a few selections on how far around it will revolve. We can select the blind end condition to simply give a certain angle of rotation. Or, if we want a revolved feature to go up to a certain point, we can select up to vertex. We will use this option for the revolve to go up to where the straight face meets the curved face. Next, let's adjust this area so that our cut goes through the angled face as well. We can do this with a simple extruded cut. We can start a new sketch on this face, and since we just want to extend the cut we already have, we can use the Convert Entities option to convert any geometry we have into sketch entities. I will select the face we want, and now we have our profile to make the extruded cut. Since we want it to cut up to and through the connecting face, we can use the end condition up to surface and select the bottom face, which completes our feature. Now let's take a look at the sweep feature. This feature requires two sketches, one for the profile of the sweep and the other for the path the profile is swept along. We will use a swept cut on this face. First, let's create a sketch for the path that we will sweep along. Notice, when I create the first line, I can add a midpoint relation between the line I am creating and the bottom line of the face I am sketching on. 
This is because relations and dimensions can be added between new sketch entities and part geometry. After creating the sketch, I'm going to use the sketch fillet entity to smoothen out the sketch and add circular arcs to each corner. Let's add a profile. The profile in relation to the path should be perpendicular, so I will select this face to create the sketch. Just to show how this feature works, I will create a simple semicircle with the center point of the circle located at the point the path touches the profile. I can rotate the view to see the sketches align how I want. Once you start dealing with multiple sketches at once, rotating the screen while in a sketch can be very useful, but remember to use Ctrl-8 to go back normal to the plane. Let's select the swept cut feature. We can choose the profile we created in the profile selection box and our path in the path selection box. Note that instead of directly selecting the sketch in our 3D interface, we can also select the individual sketches. We can do this by opening up the feature manager tree viewer to the top left of our visual interface and selecting our two sketches in their respective boxes. This is useful for when you want to access features or sketches while in a property manager. And as we see, this finishes our swept cut feature. We won't be covering the lofted and boundary bosses and cuts in this video, as they are a bit past our scope and will not be necessary for the CSWP exam, although I eventually plan on covering these in a future series as they are very useful for creating organic looking geometry. To clean up some of the sharp edges on our part, we can use the fillet feature. Don't be overwhelmed by all of the options in the property manager. All you need to do is enter a radius for a simple fillet. We can select the lines we want to fillet and this completes the feature. If instead of a rounded corner, we need an angled corner, we can use the chamfer feature located in the drop down menu under the fillet to create the angled corners. In this case, we can select the distance and angle of our chamfer, but again, don't feel overwhelmed by all the options in the chamfer property manager either. I will be going over all of the options for the chamfer and many other features in their own videos outside the Zero to CSWP series. For the CSWP, you only need basic functionality. Although the three primary planes are great, it can be useful to have more at your disposal. To create custom planes, select the Reference Plane button. You can define a new plane based on pre-existing faces, lines, vertexes, planes, or sketches in your part. We will go more in depth in episode 3 as to how you can use these in an exam or for your own drawings, but for now, let's add a simple reference plane to show how we would do that. For example, we want the plane to be angled to this face and to be going through this line of the part. First, we can select the line and under the property manager, give the line a coincident relation to the new plane we're going to add. Then we can select this face and make the plane angled at 15 degrees to the face that we have. Again, I will go into all the ways you can make a plane in the next episode, but for now it's useful to know that this exists. On this plane, we can make a quick extruded cut to show that features on different planes can be useful for more complicated geometry. Almost finishing off our list of features is the draft feature, which adds an angle to a face on a part by extending other sections of the part geometry. This will make more sense once you see a completed draft feature. Like other features in this video, I'm going to skim this over, as the full functionality of the draft is not needed for the CSWP exam, and as well, the feature on its own could merit its own 15 minute video. However, it is useful to know that the draft exists as in some cases it is much easier to create a draft feature than other extrusions. Under the draft property manager are two selections, the neutral plane and the faces to draft. We will select this face as the neutral plane and these two as the two to draft. We can assign the draft an angle of 15 degrees and once we complete our feature we can see the faces are extended 15 degrees away from the neutral plane in the orientation they were previously. However, the part geometry is still maintained, which is what makes the draft feature so useful. 
last but definitely not least is the hole wizard which makes inserting holes into a part for example ansi or iso much easier the hole wizard needs a sketch with points to position the holes so let's create a quick sketch and define two hole position using point entities Then, let's open up the Hole Wizard feature. In this tab, we can select the type of hole we want, such as countersink, counterbore, and others, and as well define the size of our hole and any other dimensions that go along with it. I will select a counterbore number 10 ANSI hole. Then, to position these, we go to the Positioning tab, select the 3D Sketch button, and now we can select our points. We can see our holes are being made. When it comes to the CSWP exam, it may ask you for a specific hole type, for example, M5. So make sure you pay very close attention to the dimensions and type of hole that are given. Now that we have gone over all of the major features you will need for the exam, let's talk more about the Certified SolidWorks Professional exam itself. The exam is split up into three separate parts. Part one, which covers creating a part from a drawing and then modification of the part created. Part 2, which covers design tables, configuration, and reorganization of part features. And then Part 3, which covers creating assemblies in SOLIDWORKS and then working with multiple parts inside the assembly. You can take all three parts of the exam independently, which is what I did and which is what I recommend. Once we cover everything needed to pass Part 1 of CSWP, there will be a practice episode where you can try a test exam I will make and then check to see how you did. Then, after that, we will do the same for parts 2 and 3 of the exam. Thanks for watching part 2 of Zero to CSWP. I really hope you learned something and became better at SOLIDWORKS in the process. In the next video, we're going to look at variables, global equations, patterns, and more reference geometry. As well, at the start of the video, we'll have a practice part for you to practice the skills you learned today. Be sure to like and subscribe for more content, and I'll see you in the next video.